arrived uh, for his car sharing um, experience with us. Um, welcome. together with interested people who were starting the LEED certification and the Green Building Movement. And his first conference was uh, basically about 20 people sitting around the table talking about wouldn't it be great if we could really get this going. And I thought that's probably going to be like our first car sharing symposium in New York State. And sure enough, we're a little bit over 20, so I, I feel good about that. And uh, the Green Building Council is now thousands of people attending internationally in just a, a decade. So maybe that is the future of car sharing. I'm going to share a little bit with you what Rick has said about car sharing when he talked about Peak Farm. He says really good things about car sharing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to load. But um, one of the things he talks about is how car sharing is integrating into the, the lives and, and businesses uh, throughout the community. Um, we are visiting sharing programs that are non-for-profit, community-based organizations. And so their mission, the way that they've been set up, is going to reflect what their community needs are. So I think you're going to see that each model is a little bit different depending on what their community needs. And this is in contrast to, say, a, um, a U.S.-based for-profit company, not to name names, but they generally will drop uh, cheaper cars into, you know, university areas or into big city areas, and, and that's their model. Uh, there'll have to be a contract that says, you know, you need so much usage, and they're back at their for-profit location. I think you'll see that each one of these community-based, non-for-profit car sharing groups uh, really reflects the flavor of their community and, you know, has some growing pains, tries some things out, but tries to adjust to uh, what the community needs. And I think it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for me to see the differences. Uh, I'm pretty sure car sharing in New York State, community not-for-profit car sharing in New York State, was really initiated by the help of our NYSERDA friends and grants. And Ithaca was the first car share just about a little over two years ago. So car sharing, community-based car sharing in New York State, is just over a couple years old. And we're still feeling those growing pains. Q's car is about 18 months old, and Buffalo is about 14 months old. So uh, these are all, all new organizations. Over the past two years, uh, my business partner, Chris Beck, who's also a co-founder of Q's car, we've had an opportunity to visit a number of different car shares of different sizes and cities. We've gone out to San Francisco, visited with their car share. What a phenomenal car share, hundreds of cars very large city competing with Zipcar and actually competing with another uh, non-for-profit car sharing and all working out well. Uh, we've been able to uh, visit uh, Philadelphia, talk with them in depth, and we're excited to see what Toronto uh, has to say. So once again, thank you. I'll introduce each guest as they come up and um, in, enjoy and hope you learn something. You can ask questions at the end of each presentation and we'll, we'll take it from there. So thank you again.
started a little bit differently. Um, at first, we were looking at a for-profit model. Uh, we competed in 2007 in uh, Panache Technology Entrepreneurship Competition with OES. There's a model similar to this in Syracuse, which may be approved in Syracuse uh, University or, or, or ESF, I'm not sure. But uh, essentially, you know, a bunch of business uh, plans compete for the best idea. The best idea wins, gets funded with seed funding to, uh, to get launched. And also, there's some assistance in terms of office space and startup, uh, those types of startup needs, legal support. So we got to the finals of that competition and didn't win. The idea set for a little while. Um, we came across uh, a perfect opportunity for Nasura uh, in New York State DOT. Uh, that funded uh, just under $150,000 for us to get launched uh, over the course of the first uh, 18 months and two years, which were sort of towards the second half of it. Uh, we launched in early June 2009, and so we've just hit our one year anniversary. Uh, and we've kind of grown staff wise. Uh, full-time staff members, and now we've got, um, I guess, almost four, four and a half equivalent full-time staff members, two of which are, are through NYSERDA. Um, and I'll start uh, through, uh, I wish NYSERDA, through, uh, <laughs> <laughs> through AmeriCorps. A little bit cheaper than, than me going through NYSERDA. Um, so we started with four cars, four Toyota Yaris's, or actually it was three Yaris's and one Corolla, all cars. Um, we've grown since then to eight vehicles, uh, one of which is a truck. Ford F-150 about, uh, about a month ago. Uh, so we're now up to eight vehicles. We'll be adding two more over the course of the next month. Um, when we launched, uh, we were, again, all university students, right? We came out of this, pan this Panache technology sort of entrepreneurship uh, uh, crucible, if you will. And um, we, uh, so we were very much geared towards the, the research side of things, geared towards looking at uh, maps, figuring out from census figures what, what the best way to go is. And so that's kind of how we started. We looked at primarily density, but also who, who drives to work versus who walks to work, um, how many cars are there in the average household, um, how walkable is it. There's an online index called the Walk Score Index that was uh, updated us in this process. And so we, we looked at you know the, the darker areas of your screen here are you know where, where we saw the most potential. Um, and for those of you, any of you familiar with Buffalo, that primarily means the Allentown neighborhood. Very walkable, think of, you know, like Greenwich Village in New York, very similar to that. Um, <coughs> very lively, really um, uh, vibrant commercial scene. Um, so, so that's where we launched. And that's pretty much the hatched area. So we, um, I'm gonna go through our, our, our growth a little bit here and then switch over to some of the statistics with, with Adam. We, we launched, it, like I said, June 2009. We're now up to about 250 members. We, um, it looks like a kind of a linear growth here, but it's, it's, it doesn't represent the quit members. You know, once a month, twice a month, we get members quitting. We sort of saw a, um, almost like a pause in uh, the middle of winter. Um, we, uh, we were lucky, to, lucky enough to get some advice early on from, from Kevin. I think one, one of our first uh, conversations was don't, don't launch in the winter. been in trouble. Um, we launched it, uh, I think, about the right time of year to do this, and we were big enough at, at, in the winter to kind of bear through that, uh, prim I mean, primarily also because of the help of, of, of NYSERDA. Um, I, uh, 